Hey guys, KDE back for another Radium tutorial. Today we're gonna to be taking a look at pitch correcting chorus vocals. This is the second part in a multi-part series in which I'm gonna take you guys through mixing and editing a full song. The song we're using today is Doing Things Once Again by Marty Grimes. It's a song I mix and produce and you can find it on soundcloud.com slash marty-grimes-music. All right, let's get into it. Okay, so the uh, first step, and before you can even really start to pitch correct anything, is you gotta know the key of the song. I know what key it is, and it's B major. Um, but say I didn't know, you know, a lot of engineers, you know, they're not familiar with the work that they're working on, so uh, one easy way to just find out is to pull open a piano plug-in and just try to find the notes within the scale, so. If you knew your uh, music theory, this wouldn't be you know, that hard to figure out what scale you were once you found the notes. For a lot of engineers who may not be uh, you know, that deep into music theory, um, I recommend a website called looknohands.com. Um, really easy to use. Um, you just navigate to the piano room and basically it just kind of gives you all the scales and then all the keys. Another even easier process that I do a lot when I'm uh, starting to just even record this song and say I want to throw auto-tune on is uh, use this plugin called Mixed In Key. It's not really a plugin, it's a standalone program and it's made for DJs who um, want to start tagging their songs so that their key and then their tempo are also written into the title of the songs. Um, but it works really good for um, us engineers. So all you do simply is you go to the main page, you do add, and then you find your song, and then you hit the analyze button. After that, the, uh, the song would analyze, and then it would say right here, finished, and then it would tell you which key. So it says 2A. So also you can go to browse collection here, and you can find similar information, but uh, you can also find the tempo. So it's 130 is the BPM, and then 2A. So with that said, let's just go ahead and get into uh, actually pitching the vocals. I'll go ahead and throw Melodyne on my first vocal. I'm using Melodyne Editor. You can use any version of Melodyne. Um, what I'm showing you today is just basic functionality in which I use to uh, you know, get the job done. Melodyne works um, as a plugin, but really it's a separate program that kind of rewires into Pro Tools or any other DAW. And basically, so what you have to do is you have to transfer your vocal and record it into Melodyne. So I'm gonna hit this transfer vocal with my track soloed, and I'm just gonna press play and let it record in. They been watching me, cause I been doing things, been seeing faces, Chain. Melodyne doesn't do the best job of analyzing the audio because what it's going to do is chop all, uh, all of the recorded audio into little pieces and try to align it to um, this uh, piano roll, which is on the left side of the screen. Here you can kind of set your key. Since I know it's B major, I'm going to go here and hit B and then hit major. And now my key is set, so then I can go ahead and hit scale snap. And what that does is it sets only the keys within the scale usable within Melodyne. So uh, looking here, as I mentioned, it doesn't do the best job of uh, aligning this. As you can see, this chop, half of the pitch is in A, and then the other half is in B all the way up here, which is you know not what we want. We want to see visually the waveform behind this pitch line. Basically, when we're dragging the audio, it's gonna drag to the waveform. So, Easy way to fix that is pull the slicer tool, note separation tool to be exact, and uh, just click the audio where you want to chop it. So um, as you can see, it's up there now. I usually melodyne phrase by phrase. A lot of people like to just record it in and then hit the correct pitch. This doesn't do the best job. In fact, if you did it 
it will most likely mess up your pitch and it will be more off. So I highly recommend that you spend the time and you actually do it right. So as you can see, I'm just go ahead and chopping all these tracks up. And this is usually the very first step I do before I even really get to uh, the fun stuff, which is, you know, finding all the pitches and making sure the vocal, you know, is where it needs to be. So uh, everything here is finally properly chopped. I'm gonna go and go ahead into that pitch correction now. I'm just gonna listen to it. Uh, everything is still raw. The pitch is raw, so I'm gonna go ahead and correct it as I go. Hey, Ben. So I can already see that this kind of wants to be hitting that B right there. Bang. And uh, there's a little bit dip. Why? So uh, it's kind of a trial and error thing. They been. They been. Watching. They been. So it's really that A sharp, I guess, is where the vocals wanted to be. You can get really fast with this program. Um, it's very intuitive. Right here, I'm using this pitch correct. All I have to do is slide it, and then Melodyne will center the pitch. Watching. So you can kind of, uh, you know, see how easy it is to correct these vocals. Me. They been watching me. And then you can do things like try to get rid of uh, his natural pitch drift. Me. Good. Which I like to do, especially on things like that. So it just kind of keeps his pitch right intact. And pretty much that's it to Meldine. It's a very simple plugin. There's different versions of it, which give you different features. Uh. Um, I personally like to use the versions that I can use as a plugin within Pro Tools. They have standalone versions of Melodyne. Uh, I find it a big waste of time to go exporting my audio and then importing it back into Pro Tools, like that whole process. And sometimes, you know, I may mess up and that's why you can go to reset specific edits, reset pitches, and you can kind of see what it's trying to do. So uh, I think I had it right for a second, which is... Yeah this on the A and then this section on the B. I've been doing, been seeing. One thing I like to use is this pitch tool right here. Um, they been watching me. One thing that this tool does is the slides between notes. Um, to make it as natural as possible, you want these kind of to be rounder slides, so. They been and it really does help to sit there and do this stuff manually. Watching, they been. And you'll get so much better results with a program like this than auto-tune as far as if you're using it in auto mode. And I don't get too scientific. I just try to make it as natural as I can. All right, now that I have my final Melodyne version of the track, I can go ahead and move on. The next step I do is I like to throw auto-tune after my Melodyne. Essentially, this is just gonna catch all the small pitch drifts and things that I didn't catch with Melodyne. I'm using Melodyne more so to just target the notes that I wanna hear, and then I'm using auto-tune to, you know, look for things like pitch drift. So looking at it, everything I've done is uh, just set it up, pretty much tell it which key uh, input type is kind of which which range. Uh, obviously he's singing in like an alto, maybe even a low male, um, but for this tutorial, I'm just gonna go ahead and set it to uh, alto. Um, as far as retune speed, this is kind of how, how uh, t painty you want. I usually set anywhere from 40 to 50. I'm gonna actually go to 50 here because uh, his pitch was sounding pretty good coming out of Melodyne, and uh, I don't really want it to correct that hard. The next thing to really look at right here is this uh, tracking button. You have choosy and relaxed. Relaxed is for like uh, legato passages where auto-tune is trying hard to fix the uh, the drift of the note and not necessarily focusing on the changes within the note. Choosy is the opposite. It's good for uh, faster passages where uh, the notes are you know, jumping around and changing. Um, you can go in between. It's really about dialing it in and finding what you like to hear. And I'll just play a little bit of it. Making change so they been watching me cause I have been doing things, been seeing so it's not perfect, uh, it is auto-tune. 
So uh, that kind of gets into what uh, I'm gonna do next. And um, I'm just gonna go ahead and print what I have here. I'm just gonna keep the same name. I'm just gonna put PCH. So to notate that it's the pitch version, I'm gonna go ahead and give it a different color just so it's you know obvious for me to see. And from there, I send it to a print track. This is uh, really easy to set up. And then I have a L2, um, or you know, you can use any sort of dithering plugin. I'll get into dithering in another tutorial. It's a little more scientific, but just know you can open the L2, not put any sort of changes within the actual limiter, and the dithering is already on within the plugin. So you just have to open it, and then you know you're good to go. From there, I will send it to the print bus. And then um, I will go ahead and uh, change the input of my record track to uh, printed, which is the output of the print bus. So I will go ahead and record it. I don't really need to hear this because I've heard it. And then uh, what I'm actually gonna do is do um, a couple different prints. And uh, I'm gonna show you what I would do, say this was a single vocal and I'm not worried about, you know, stacks. So with that uh, printed, I'm gonna go ahead and make a new playlist. It's control backslash. With the new playlist, I'm gonna go ahead and uh, control command, click the auto tune, which is gonna disable it. And then I'm just gonna print with the straight Melodyne. Hey, man. So now here with the uh, auto tune, um, I can go ahead and put it into playlist view. And then I can go ahead and rename this. And since I know this is mellow plus Auto, which is Melodyne plus Auto Tune. And then this playlist, I'm gonna go ahead and call this just straight mellow. You don't really need to do too much for this next part, which is just take the straight record track, the raw vocals, and drag it down. Um, I'm gonna call this one raw, and then I'm gonna make a new playlist. And then I'm gonna, once again, I'm gonna just take this, okay. So I'm gonna go ahead and comp these together so that I get the most consistent take between the pitching, between the takes. So I'm gonna start with my mellow plus auto. It's gonna be the harshest with the tune. You're gonna get the most artifacts. And then uh, you know I would go ahead and take the things, um, take the artifacted parts or the parts that just you know sound better either on the original or on just the straight Melodyne, and then I'm gonna Frankenstein together the best pitch version I can. Uh, one thing to note that I always do are uh, breaths. One of the things that easily uh, get the most artifacted that sound synthetic once you put Melodyne on, um, take all these breaths. You can just look at them from the regular waveform. And uh, you know I'm gonna just bring that to my main track here and I don't even need to listen to it because I know that these breaths are gonna be messed up. So with that said, I'm just gonna play this first part and see how it sounds. They been watching me cause I been. So that they been sounds just a little weird. So let's see if I just take it from the Melodyne version of, um, if it sounds any better, you know. They been watching me cause and you might get some clicks because this is me chopping between i will fade the whole thing afterwards so don't worry about that they been watching me cuz i been doing things been seeing so uh that's kind of uh the workflow i'd go ahead and comp out this whole thing like i said before i wouldn't go this in depth if i knew i had you know six layers of vocals here because um, I'd really want to save uh, my energy for the mix. So yeah, that is how to properly pitch correct your vocals. If you haven't already, please check out my previous video on aligning vocals, as well as the accompanying blog post to this video, which is gonna take you through the different products I use in this video, as well as the different options you have to achieve the same results. Links to both will be in the description below, and make sure you check out radium-media.com for the latest updates.
change. 